Hey everyone, this is Daniel and in today's video, we're going to take a look at Copilot in Power Automate for Desktop. Now, the announcement of this Copilot was made during Ignite, which was November, that is last month. And it is currently in preview, which means I think it doesn't have all the bells and whistles just yet. But since it has been released, we will take a closer look at it. So stick around, this is very important. But first, here's my intro video. So let's get started. And the first thing that I want to show you is the, my new version of Power Automate for desktop. And on the top right, there you go, you see now Copilot. And this Copilot is on the top vertical navigation towards the right side. So it doesn't really matter which one of these tabs you're on, regardless of which one it is, you will always see the Copilot on the top right. Now, before we jump into that, what I want to talk about is the release date or the release version. So if you click on this help, which has got the also the question mark, if I click on it, go down to about, you see this pop up window and it shows you the release version that you have. So it is 2.38.182.23307. And if I go over to the website, which shows all the release versions, this is the one that it is, it is November 9th. Now it's interesting because the Ignite was actually around the 14th, 15th of November. Uh, so I was expecting the version number to be something after that date. Uh, but I also see the number up, I also see this as an update, a 2311 update. So it probably did get released along with this version. In fact, it is released along with this version. What I found a little interesting was when I actually go and take a look at the documentation specifically for this release version, um, I did not see anything to do with Copilot listed over here. So this documentation over here is incomplete. Nonetheless, the version number that we have matches with the one I actually have installed and that one has the Copilot on it. So for your sake, if you're interested in doing a little bit of POC and just getting familiar with this, just make sure that you've got the latest version available. Uh, and again, currently based on the documentation and what I myself just downloaded, um, if you go take a look, the December one, it's not even available right now, no hyperlink. The last one you have is this version over here for 2311 update. Uh, go ahead and download and you will get a copy of Copilot. So let's just take a general look at all the features of this Copilot with Power Automate for desktop. Uh, when I go and click on it, I see this window slide out to the right. And as of right now, we see that it is in preview, which basically means that it may not have all the bells and whistles to it but they've established that there is a Copilot available for the Power Automate for desktop, which means you can start utilizing it. And it's giving you some examples over here. It says that, hi, get all your questions answered about desktop flows, with some examples over here. How do I trim text? How can I extract text from PDF files? And how can I merge two PDF files? For some reason, these were the three examples that was given over here, all right? Uh, and again, like I said, regardless of which one of these tabs you are in, you will always see that Copilot window on the right side. Now, coming from the cloud side, where I've actually tested the Copilot and used the Copilot on the cloud, I was expecting some similar behavior over here, but it didn't happen. And, and towards the end of the video, I'll do some side-by-side -side comparisons, I at least have two different things I wanna show you, but I'll quickly tell you what I mean. So right here, say if I go and say, how do I trim a text? I click on it, and if I go in and click on the enter on the bottom right, uh, it goes and says working on it, and then it goes ahead and gives me an example. It basically tells me how I can do it. It doesn't actually create the flow for me. It doesn't even take me in and starts creating the triggers or anything like that. Right now for the desktop flows, this is the best that it can do, is it gives you very detailed step-by-step -step instructions. It even gives you link to Microsoft learning documents, but it doesn't actually go ahead and create the steps for you or doesn't go and actually create the flow for you. This is the best that it does. Now, there are some actions which I'll show you that does help you a little bit. The Copilot does help you a little bit, but overall, this is what the Copilot in desktop is for. And I want to point out that this is currently in preview, so there could be more bells and whistles coming out in the future, but this is it. That's all it can do right now. In addition, if you go ahead and actually start creating a new flow, all right, and I'll go and say uh, test desktop flow, go ahead and create it. We will go ahead and go inside the studio, which means another window will pop up. In that new window or in that new section that pops up as well, it also has the Copilot on the right side. So you always knew that there were these three options over here, which were the variables, the UI elements, and the images. Now the top on the list is the Copilot icon. But again, in here, it is also the same thing. Even though we are inside the Flow Studio, it still behaves the same way. So go ahead and ask a question over here. Go ahead and click on Enter. 
I was first expecting it to already start putting in all the actions over here inside because we are in the studio, but it doesn't. All again it does is gives you very detailed step-by-step -step instructions. And the way the instructions also is that sometimes in behind, next to each of the text, it will give you a one, then it will give you a two. Uh, what that one means is which hyperlink it is referring to, which learning document is referring to. So in this case, there is only one hyperlink for the learning document. Therefore, you only see this one and you only see that one. But if there are multiple hyperlinks or for multiple learning documents, you will see one, two, three. So I give them kudos to how detailed these steps are provided, but it just isn't the same level as what the cloud copilot is. Because let's face it, the cloud copilot actually does the work for you, does a really good amount of work. This is not there. Now this is how it works in a brand new desktop flow, the one we created new. But if I were to go ahead and open up an existing one of mine, let's say I come outside and I go ahead and open up this one with the um, and I go ahead and open up this one for getting updates of multiple tracking numbers. If I go and click on the pencil, another window will open up. What I want to point out is that the Copilot feature is available both for new desktop flows and existing desktop flows. So the assistance of the Copilot will be available across the entire desktop flows, and that's a very important thing to be aware of. And even over here on an existing flow, the Copilot preview option is available. So that's an important point that it's not just on new ones, on the existing ones as well. But the functionality is just the same that we saw even outside a dedicated flow. If I came over here and asked another question, is it how do I add an action to open a browser and I click on enter, it starts to think about it, it says working on it, it is generating it, and then it comes up again with very detailed step-by-step -step instructions, but it doesn't actually go ahead and add any actions, something that we see a lot on the cloud flow side, all right? Keep that in mind. By the way, if you always want to reset and start from scratch, on the top right, you see right next to the X, there is this ellipsis for more actions. Click on it and you can start a new chat, which means it just clears it off and starts from scratch, makes it a little bit easier for you to do all the reading. Now, the thought that comes to my mind, and I'm sure some of you are also thinking is that, come on, Daniel, exactly how much of Copilot is this? Because just because you went ahead and changed the brand to Copilot, all it is doing is giving me suggestions. And I'll give you an example. Here in Excel, I've already got some data. If I go up on the search and I do a search for something like this, formula to extract last row from a column, it is giving me some suggestions. And if I go ahead and click on any one of them, on the right side, the help opens up and is giving me a list of all the explanations plus step-by-step -step syntax. So you do see the similarity? Right now in your Microsoft Office or your Office 365, whatever you have, you've got really good help functionality available. And that hem functionality looks a lot like this Copilot feature that is available over here. But, but I'll tell you one thing, in Copilot's defense, there are some examples where Copilot, even right now, specifically this Power Automate Copilot, goes one notch higher. And so here's an example. Keep in mind this flow. Now, you don't have to understand the whole thing, but I wanna show you is that right now in that step, uh, step number 13, uh, I'm doing a split text and I've got it to a variable called text list. So when I'm asking a copilot a question, I can reference text or content from my flow, this one over here. I can reference that in my conversation. And then when I go ahead and click on enter, after it does thinking it through and generating an answer for me, it will respond back very specifically, keeping in mind what I asked for. So I'm pretty happy for this one because this is what helps me understand that, okay, at least this Copilot, even though it looks and feels a lot like the help that I just showed you in Excel, this does take it one notch higher, is that it is very customized to that specific question that you're asking for in this scenario. And also it depends on the type of question that you ask. And I was asking a very specific question. It says, I have a variable named text list. How do I extract the last low from this variable? It took that name. It knows what I'm referencing. So it says to the variable text list, and it gives me all the step-by-step -step instructions plus the learning document. So this at least gave me some peace of mind that the initial preview work is pretty good. Uh, at least it points me in the right direction. Now I can do some reading up and at least start working on it but it doesn't have the same flexibility as what the Cloudflow has. So let me just spend the next few minutes show, doing that side-by-side -side comparison of how Copilot works on the Cloudflows versus in this desktop one. So in the Cloudflow area, right on the home page where it says, let's automate something, what should it do? I'll go ahead and describe a little bit and I'll go ahead and now click on generate. And in the generate process, it starts two steps. First of all, it says, hey, in step number one, this is the suggested flow with the trigger and the actions. Now we know that desktop flow is gonna be a little different because desktop flow does not have triggers, 
but you see over here on the cloud one, at least it's giving me what are the triggers and the actions that you want. I like this, so I'll go ahead and click on next. Now it is going and making sure all my connections are good and I can go and click on create the flow. So by initial building wizarding type of a thing, the copilot already goes and does a lot of work for me only in the cloud flows. In addition, on the right side, the copilot to assist me in enhancing the flow is available. So if I were to go ahead and ask another question, is that add an action to that sends an email, it is working on it, and then it automatically goes ahead and says, hey, here is the action that it did. It went ahead and added the action of an Outlook 365 connector to send the email. So this is the level of which Copilot works on the cloud side. But as I just showed you on the desktop file, let me actually go back over here on the desktop. Over here in the Copilot, if I go ahead and ask a question, so how do I add an action to open a browser and hit enter? All it does is it gives me suggestions. It does not do the same thing we just saw on the cloud side is go through a step of asking you, hey, what are the actions that you want? And then it goes and creates it. It doesn't do that on the desktop flow. It gives you very detailed step-by-step -step instructions, but doesn't actually help you build it. So that is difference number one. The second one is for existing flows. So if I were to go ahead and edit an existing flow in the desktop one, the situation again is very similar. It opens up into my desktop flow studio. The copilot shows up on the right side. Um, I can go and actually say that add, add a comment at step number say 12, all right? I'll just go ahead and make this up over here. It is going ahead and trying to generate an answer for me. It is working on it. And again, it gives me step-by-step -step instructions, but it doesn't really do that for me. Two other subtle but important things I wanna show you. First of all, when you're asking these questions on the desktop one, you are limited to only 200 characters. That's one thing. Also, when you go and ask a question like this, give me an overview of what this flow does. After it is done generating it, watch what the answer is. It says desktop flows in Power Automates allow you to automate all the repetitive desktop flows. They broaden the existing blah, 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 blah. What I am reading over here is a very general answer and it is not customized specifically to your desktop flow, this situation that you're in. So keep these two things in mind, this 200 limit and this generalization, because I'm gonna switch over to the cloud one, watch. So now on the cloud flow, I'm actually going and picking this existing flow that I've created, all right? I'm gonna just click on the edit, it'll take me to the new edit designer, and the first thing that you see on the bottom right is that it is allowed 2,000 characters to put in. Remember, on the desktop one was only 200. Also over here, I'm gonna ask this question. Give me an overview of what this cloud flow does. Remember on the desktop one, it was a very general answer. So let's see what the cloud one does, all right? The cloud one again is working on it, is generating it. But check this out. This cloud flow creates a Microsoft from webhook trigger and retrieves the response details on the form. It then runs a power automate desktop flow in attended mode, passing the response ID, company name, full name, and email as input parameters. I mean, it goes down to that detail. So you see that the Cloudflow's Copilot is pretty advanced and they've actually done a really good job, which is why this has actually gone production. The desktop flow on the other hand, like I said, it is currently in preview. So the good thing is that they have established it. They said, yes, we are going to have Copilot, but it is currently in preview, which means it doesn't have all the bells and whistles. So as of right now, my overall opinion about Copilot in the desktop flow is very guarded. And by guarded, I mean I'm right in between right now. I mean, I'm not super wowed by it, but at the same time, I don't even think it is really useless because let's face it, it does help you by giving you some step-by-step -step information and gives you links to really good learning document. Also, if you were very specific in asking a question, like the one that I demonstrated, the one where I gave it the variable name and told what I want to do, it did give very good information back over here, but it's not at the same level at, at what its sibling in the Cloudflow side does. The Cloudflow takes it to a whole different level. So I'm cautiously optimistic. I'm hoping more and more features will come out, and I'm hoping that there'll be a little bit of parity between the desktop one and the cloud one. So let's face it that we don't have to learn two separate co-pilot techniques. Both of them should be at the same level. So that's my personal opinion. We just have to wait and see where this goes. But as of, as of right now, feel free to play around with it. Remember, this is in preview, so it doesn't really go production in any way. It's in preview. And hopefully, this video helped you. And as always, keep using Power Automate. Hello, hello, hello. So if you like this video, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and smash that like button. Also, if you have a few extra seconds, can you go ahead and put in a comment?
either say something nice or give me ideas for my next video. And until then, see ya.